Well, we come back to the third part of David Wilkinson, the prophet. And you know what is also true about these prophets? Of which people won't openly say, oh, he's a prophet. As we said from the beginning, people accept these persons as prophets but will not say that they're prophets because <clears throat> it is unpalatable to tell us Christians that these persons are prophets but they stand as prophets they're taken as prophets they're worshipped as prophets their words are hung on to by the sheeple as prophets and the prophets stand up and they play their part. The God has told me this morning, the Holy Spirit, they always say the Holy Spirit has taught me this morning or showed me this morning this truth and has showed me this truth and that truth and every other truth. And then what do they do from that standpoint? They then talk down to us. They never include themselves in what they are preaching. They always talk down to us that we are the ones that should be doing this this and this never themselves because you see they accept themselves as being the prophets of God they're still of the Old Testament age that's what they are they've never come into the new covenant the eternal covenant. <clears throat> now, another thing that they say, and it's very, very cute, as, as um, we used to say, very subtle, is that they will pose a question and never answer it. Ever come across that? It's to catch the attention. It's to catch the attention. We had one blackguard called Ian Paisley. He's now gone to his eternal home. We know where that is. He used to pose questions because he craftily knew that he had to get the attention of people. You see, having a first of all gone the neo-evangelical way of warming up the audience. You see, in this great theatre that he was going to play in. This is how they are. And here we have it. With Wilkinson. Concerning the New Covenant. And of course the Holy Spirit. These two by the way. He promotes. Doesn't promote justification by faith. The finished work of Jesus Christ. Or even Jesus Christ. All he owns is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that, Jesus the other, Jesus. It's never the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he cannot, because he is not of the Spirit of God. He's not being born again. He's not regenerated. He hasn't got the Spirit of God in him, even though he says he has. He's a bunch of liars. Now, <clears throat> on page 62 of his book, he says this, many believers today know that God's new covenant, yet they can hardly believe it, because it sounds too good to be true. Wow! Does it? Oh, right. They say, I know God has given his people the Holy Ghost to come and dwell in us. And I know the Spirit takes it upon himself to cause us to obey Christ. Hey, <clears throat> oh, I want that blessing badly. Right, yeah, <clears throat> but how can I lay hold of it? What, the Holy Ghost? Yeah, how can I obtain it for my life? <laughs> <clears throat> Absolute codswallop, isn't it? Hmm? And of course, Wilkinson replies having posed the question that he never answers, but gives a reply that is ambiguous. Ambiguous, okay? For his reply is, 
There is something we must do. Oh yeah, something I must do. Right, okay. Hallelujah, baby. <laughs> there is something we must do. Ezekiel writes, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Suddenly there stood before Ezekiel a great army, alive and breathing. The Holy Ghost had filled all those dead bodies with life. And now they were prepared to do battle. In an instant they had entered into the full enjoyment and blessing of the new covenant. God's Spirit had taken his rightful place in them, and he was bringing about all the promised changes. So what did Wilkinson overlook? That all the bones, <clears throat> the dry bones, were dead. So we're dead in trespasses and sins, so we can't do anything of ourselves. Okay? Not a thing, not a jot. We're all dead. Until God breathes upon us as individuals and as a church as a whole to cause us to stand up. And that is regeneration. <coughs> Pardon me. That is regeneration. And then, of course, we begin there upon to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The old spirit passes. Now Wilkinson here hasn't answered the question. He hasn't answered it. Hmm? And he goes on to say, Jesus tells us clearly, your heavenly Father shall give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Yet scripture also makes it clear that there is a right way to ask for the Holy Spirit. Yes, but these dry bones couldn't ask. They didn't open their mouths. They didn't have a mouth. They didn't ask for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came to them by an act of God. So they were passive in it. Not active. But of course this man being outside of the kingdom of God. As a dog outside Jerusalem. That stands for justification by faith not by law. Doesn't understand these things. Hmm? Now he goes on to say that God specifically instructed the prophet. Prophesy unto the wind. My spirit, thus saith the Lord God, breathe upon these slain, that they may live. The Lord was telling Ezekiel, speak to the Holy Ghost. He wasn't. <laughs> hmm? <clears throat> he wasn't at all. Telling Ezekiel, speak to the Holy Ghost. Ezekiel, tell him, thus saith the Lord, bring life. Didn't. Didn't at all. Remind him of the covenant promises. Oh, so Ezekiel was to remind the Holy Ghost of the covenant promises, was he? And to the bones, state to them, to him, as my sworn word to you. Yeah, state to him, the Holy Ghost, my sworn word to you. Ezekiel first prophesied to the bones, but now he was being instructed to prophesy or preach the Holy Ghost. Spirit. No, he wasn't at all. He was the Word of God. Simply as that. But this man doesn't understand because, as we say, he's outside. He leaves off saying that this was the Church of Jesus Christ of the New Testament, that each and every individual person was an individual person whom Christ died for. He atoned for each and every person whom he was given charge of, of by the Father and that the church at Calvary was there crucified as these bones were dead <clears throat> and then rose when Christ rose from the dead so she was justified at Calvary you see if ye be risen with Christ seek things that are above so we are risen with Christ previously at Calvary. 
and there's no way of getting around that. This was the bones in the valley. There weren't bones on the hills. They weren't high and lifted up. They were in the valley. They were nothing. People would just pass by them, and that's how they do to those today. They just pass by us. Oh, they're, they're nothing. They're, they're nobodies. You see, whilst they pass by on the other side, thinking themselves to be somebody, they don't see us. And the gospel, of course, is foolishness. Preach to the wind. And this is what Ezekiel was doing. He was preaching to the wind at the end of the day. As people walk by, he might as well have been. See, that's the emphasis. He's preaching to the wind. And when evangelists go out, they preach to the wind. And, of course... Everyone that is born of God is like the wind. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. You see, what Wilkinson does is to take away, <coughs> pardon me, the power and the authority of God and lays it with man, and whilst doing so, preaches a mystical covenant and a Holy Spirit and no church. In fact, we can conclude with this. David Wilkinson does not preach the fundamentals of the Christian faith, but the fundamentals of neo-evangelicalism. That's what he does. Hmm? That's what he's always done. And we're going to leave it at that and say this much. We should examine all things to see if they be of God. We should test the spirits of men. As James says, prove, prove that you are Christian. It's no good you saying you're a Christian. It's no good people accepting you as a Christian. Prove you're a Christian. Prove it. Amen.